17 ounces was the most we've ever needed on the tire. Yeah. That was a beadlock wheel, so you have yeah. all these bolts everywhere. Yeah. You have all these. There's so many ways for it. But that's anyway. still like yeah. strapping a puppy to the inside <laughs> of your wheel. <laughs> no puppies were harmed <laughs> in mounting these wheels and tires. Just balancing beads? Yeah. I put a puppy we just strap tire. puppies to our tires. Oh Can I get a smaller God. puppy for this wheel? We do not strap puppies to our tires. <laughs> DCD Customs here in Los Angeles, California, and I have great news, I have good news, and of course I have bad news. Now we'll start with the bad news first, get it out of the way. Unfortunately, that's the engine has not arrived yet. So I do have to tease you guys just a little bit longer before you'll be able to find out what motor exactly we are putting into the stepchild. But don't worry, it should be here in hopefully the next day or two. So you'll be finding out very, very soon. Now the good news is we will be showing you a couple things today that we will be changing on the stepchild. But first, one thing that we all know that we're not going to be changing is our best top trek top. And the reason I bring that up is because as you guys might already know, best top is really pushing their summer promotion right now. Their open air promotion because they really want to show a ton of love to all of you JK, YJ, and TJ Jeep owners. Right now, if you use the promo code light bright summer which gets you a free hat for any purchase over $200 it can also get you up to $150 cash back on a ton of best top products for those three models now that can include the trek top like we have on our jeep here and we've been running on the step tall ever since easter jeep safari it can also include the sunrider which of course we know was my favorite modification to our jeep long before we had the trek top on there and of course it also includes the trek top Pro for the JK, which has that amazing glass rear window, which Kevin and I really, really want for our Jeep on the JL. It's just not quite available just yet. Now it also includes a ton of other products and you can check out which products those are if you go to the Best Top website. But again, use the Light Bright Summer Code and you can get a Light Bright Nation hat for yourself on any purchase over $200. Now in addition to that good news, I will finally admit it, I did cave and Kevin is getting what he has always, always wanted. Kevin? A new girlfriend? Shut up, roll it to me. We are going to 40 inch, Milestar, Patagonia tires. Kevin's finally getting those 40 inch tires he has been wanting for freaking ever. Now, we all know the reasons I originally wanted to stay 38. However, what's going under here and under here Honestly, it really calls for 40. So I'm finally caving. We're going to the 40 inch tires. And I figured this would also be the perfect time to go ahead and do that long-term Milestar Patagonia mud terrain tire review that all of you have been asking us for, for months. Because at this point, we've been running Milestars for almost an entire year. It's been a year. I guess when it I has. When I bought the first set. I guess you did buy the first Okay, so it's been a year. So we, we've learned a lot about the tire. Maverick. Come here, leave the cameraman alone. So we're hoping we can give you a little more insight into how these tires do in different terrains, how they do long-term as far as mileage goes. And of course, we wanna show you a few other tips, tricks, and little nifty things that we found out about these tires in the meantime. So let's get into that. Now, in addition to the great news of, of course, jumping up to the 40-inch Milestar Patagonia MTs, we do have new wheels that we are going to be pairing with these. And I'll show you those new wheels as soon as we get done with the tire review. I also have a question for Library Nation. We do um, have, we want your opinion on as something. As to what we should do yep. with these wheels as far as powder coating goes. Yes, absolutely. So stay tuned for that. But first things first, these tires. Now, the one thing I kind of want to start with is something that I don't think a lot of people, if really anyone, is aware of. And that's that the 38 inch and the 40 inch Milestar Patagonia MTs have a slightly different spacing between their lugs with the 35 inch and the 37 inch Milestar Patagonias. The smaller tires are actually more aggressive and that the gapping between your lugs 
is significantly greater. It's bigger. We've actually taken photos and videos so you can see the difference between the gapping on a 35 or 37 inch mile start versus a 38 or 40 inch mile start. Which, which I, is, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of jealous of kind of jealous because they're more aggressive more looking. aggressive looking. These look more all-terrain ish. Th these definitely um, have more of the appearance of your hybrid which is what this right. kind of is. But the 35 and the 37 look super aggressive mud terrain yeah. and oh. I know, I know. But the good news is, is at least it doesn't seem to have any effect on the performance because obviously we've shown how freaking amazing the 38 inch tires perform. And obviously we'll be able to show you in the near future how the 40 inch tires perform as well. Now in our experience in the past year, we have proven through video, and you are more than welcome to go through and watch any and all of our wheeling videos on these 38 inch Patagonias. But I'm pretty sure we've done an amazing job proving that not only are they good in wet weather, they're fantastic in snow and ice. They do really good on slick rock. They do great on freaking great on dry rock. Uh, they do really good in just about every terrain we've put them up against, except for one. And that's gonna be your really thick clay mud. And the only reason they don't do really well in that is because they just simply don't self clear that mud very well. They just don't have the gapping here and the grooves aren't large enough to self clear. So if you're looking to do some mud bogging, probably want to look into some mud boggers. Go figure. <laughs> Something, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit more akin to that. But other than that, this has been an all around amazing tire on road and off road. And of course, on road, we all know at this point, they are dead silent on road. Well, so They're what the you're... quietest tire we have ever run on any of our vehicles. So what you're giving up with the clay mud performance, you're making up for the on road uh, manners. So yeah, so the it, drivability it's... on road is amazing right so it's just a trade-off so they're they're yeah. fantastic there's compromises everywhere right. obviously they're an eight nine out of ten everywhere yeah um and then except for in, in in thick clay type mud yeah so thick clay definitely not the tire you probably want to go with but just about everywhere else they seem to have performed really freaking well now of course that leads us to on road and how they perform on road which is great when it comes to traction when it comes to control whether it's raining whether it's snowing they've done phenomenal for us and they've lasted a surprisingly long time considering how soft of a compound these things are made out of. So, so for us personally, we've been getting probably around 25 to 30-ish thousand miles out of a set of Milestar Patagonias. But you have to keep in mind that us, we're recently, especially, we've been towwing about how much? Maybe 2,500 pounds, give or take. With all the rest of plus the plus down. So whatever, we've been towing pounds. about 3,000 pounds across the nation, doing crazy wheeling, and each set of mile stars that we've had on our Jeep has had at least one burnout performed on them. So <laughs> now that being said, there's a couple things that you can do personally that we have figured out that can make these tires last even longer for you. Obviously, if you're not towing, they're gonna last longer no matter what. Well, it's gonna be the weight of your vehicle as well. Yeah. So if you're in a two-door JK or two-door JL They're gonna or last TJ, a little longer than, say, a four-door that's fully loaded down. And then another thing is, is that these tires are extremely soft. We've yep. always said that. Yep. These are not a high mileage, 50, 60,000 no. mile all-terrain tire. If you want 50, 60,000 miles out of a tire, you're gonna have to look towards an all-terrain. This is gonna be your best bet for the performance of a mud terrain with the on-road manner of an all-terrain. That's what these things are, and that's where they At really an shine. an extremely aggressive an price. extremely low price, which yeah. is obviously another perk. A couple things you can do to make them last a little bit longer as far as mileage go is rotating them frequently, at least every 3,000 miles. Kevin typically tries to go every 12,000 miles without <laughs> rotating them because it's Kevin. Definitely rotate them. The more frequently you rotate them, the better that they'll wear, the less chance you'll have of cupping or feathering of the tires. So you'll kind of gain some mileage there. And of course, that also means, by the way, that they'll stay quieter much longer because once you start cupping and feathering, that's where a lot of the road noise and, starts to come in. And look, guys, cupping and feathering is just an inherent design of a mud terrain. A mud tire. terrain. And we'll get into that a little bit more down the future of this video. But in addition to that, your air pressure and running proper air pressure in your tires can also extend the life of your tires. So, now, Kevin's also made oh, the, the on, wonderful on. decision. Oh, oh no, 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 wait, no. Wait, wait. Kevin's made the wonderful decision 
on more than one occasion to leave the tires that the eight PSI we were running on the trail to drive it to our hotel that was maybe 20, 30, or maybe two hours at one point down the road. So obviously that will have an extreme effect on how your tires wear and how long they last as well. Yes, I, yes. Yeah, yes. No, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, well, look, we don't recommend that, but sometimes- Do not recommend it whatsoever. It's extremely hot or cold or you're just gonna air down again. Or so it's like 2 a.m. Now, the last thing that I also really wanted to touch base on, it's gonna be the weight. Of these so one thing that i don't know if we've mentioned much on this channel but when you're looking at tires and wheels for your jeep rotational mass plays a huge role when it comes to weight so let's say you add a winch that weighs 40 pounds if you're adding 40 pounds to your jeep it's not a big deal right now let's say you're adding tires that weigh 10 pounds more than your previous tire if you don't know about rotational mass you might think okay you're only adding 40 pounds but rotational mass is usually about three times that of your regular mass, which means that you're adding 30 pounds per corner or 120 pounds of rotational mass to your vehicle. So when it comes to wheel weight and tire weight, it can play a huge role in how your vehicle takes off on the line, how quickly it brakes, how it performs in general on road and off road. So it's something that is really important when it comes to choosing a tire or choosing a wheel. All right, so when you add heavy bead locks, Beat along locks. with bigger tires, you could be adding 45 pounds per corner yeah. times three. three, so four, eight, 12, so 135. So that's 135 pounds per corner. Per corner. So that's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. One, so that's two, 400, three, four, 525, five, anyways, whatever. Over, over 500, 500 pounds, pounds just by switching to heavier bead locks and heavier tires. So these are really important things to keep in mind when you're jumping up in tire size and when you're swapping to different wheels especially heavier wheels such as bead locks so with that in mind i want to show you why we like the mile star so much all right you guys so to help us figure out this weight situation so we can show it we have david who is the owner of dcd customs and the reason i brought him to help us with this is because if kevin tried to lift these tires you'd probably think we were lying or kevin was faking it because we're big mile star tire fans obviously whereas david not so much well i had no idea what milestone is before you guys so i just i have to be honest because i sell needles all day and i love needles so, so and speaking of we have 40 inch by 13 and a half milestar patagonia mts and we have 40 inch by 13 and a half nitto trail wrappers so these are the exact same size tire and this one's oh, a c rated this is a c rated tire. this one's a d rated this is a d rated tire so Patagonia first. Pick up the milestone first. Looks like a 35. <laughs> so easy. She's strong in, right? Okay. Now let's pick up the, the here. <laughs> I would guess at least 30 to 45 percent difference. If not double. Probably like <laughs> at least at least 20 pounds heavier. At least. Yeah. At least like, what it feels like. I don't know if it really is, but it's a heavy. It's now. Like that feels like a 35. Right. Versus this feels like the 40. Now, we sell these all day long. Yeah, I love this thing. And these are, and these are a great tire. Now the thing to keep this in mind. This looks better, it's not, I didn't look. I've never run that tire, so I don't know how it works, but this tire works. No, I no, will concede. We're not, we're not arguing that it doesn't work, for sure. I will concede that that tire looks super aggressive, looks super aggressive. mean, big side, yes. side lugs. This tire is a lot lighter, and, lot that, lighter. and that yes. rotational mass is gonna this be better for you. This totally feels uh, as heavy as a uh, Nito or BFG 35. So they do feel a lot lighter. Right. So you could not, we're not advising this, but you could run a much larger mile star versus other tires while retaining a lower rotational mass, which runs a less risk of breaking crap when you're doing harder stuff. Which is why we maybe had a lot of luck so Which is far. honestly, yeah, which is why maybe we haven't broken stuff until very recently, despite how hard we've been wheeling on 38s and beadlocks, maybe because the tire is so much lighter at a 38 versus other, 37 inch i mean our 38 is lighter and, than most 30 and some 35 50 000 miles we haven't we haven't cut a sidewall never cut a sidewall we've never had a flat we've never had a flat tire and another thing if you run this tire with a just a regular wheel non beat lock it should be good because it'll be way lighter very yeah. light and i love horsepower all my jeeps have v8s but i'll take weight versus power so i'd rather have a less horsepower jeep with a lighter weight than heavy jeep with more horsepower because weight breaks stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. Let's keep it light and... Uh, but we're definitely not going the light route. Although, our wheels that we're getting that we're about to show you that's right behind David's butt right so there. Let's let's go show them the wheels. David, thank you. We'll let you go. All right, guys. Thanks, buddy. They need to work on a design on this time. <laughs> they need to make it sexier. They, they, they need to make it appealing, man. Look, More look aggressive. At it. Seems lucky. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? The old Nito Dune grapplers that look, had flames on the side of it. The whole pattern was flamey, which I actually laughed at that tire. I don't know who designed it, but this reminds me of that tire. But I so guess they work. It, it, it works. Maybe not the most aggressive looking tire out there. <laughs> Thanks, Thank David. you. Now with all this in mind, we will be jumping up in weight when it comes to tires because we will be going from a 38 to a 40 inch right. mile start. Yeah, yeah, but we are going to new wheels like I mentioned earlier. And that difference is about six to eight pounds per tire. Well, guess what we're saving? About six pounds of wheel. So with these, these are guys. all aluminum KMC XD 228s. These are 17 by eight and a half with a 4.75 backspace, which is a zero offset and these guys are going to look amazing mounted onto those 40 inch mile star tires which i'm not going to go too much into these but if you look at them you might get an idea too of what's to come but before we get to that what do we do with these guys should we powder coat these should we leave them as is should we powder coat just the ring black i want y'all's opinion kevin wants y'all's opinion because he's undecided also keep in mind that these are aluminum which means that if we do powder coat this ring if we scratch it when we scratch it when we scratch it thank you because it's definitely gonna happen uh, when we scratch it you're gonna see the aluminum bright silver underneath no matter what and we're just gonna constantly have to touch up or just leave it as is so just something to keep in mind but let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below in the meantime I do want to get more into tires and for that I need a little help from our good old friend Andrew Comrie Picard all right, so now speaking of tires, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to go even more in depth when it comes to tires. And you might recognize this giant wall of tires next to me. So we are back at our good friend ACP, AK Andrew Comrie Picard's house because of this, ziptire.net. Because for those of you who were able to look up Andrew on Wikipedia, and you might have seen all of those accomplishments, so to speak, in addition to all of those, he is also a tire expert. Go figure. <laughs> Some people just say geek. Okay, so what are you doing right now? Well, so the advantage of owning a mobile tire business is that I get to come and mount on the weekends, use my tire vans to mount my own personal tires. And I'm putting actually slicks on for the street, which you should not do at home. <laughs> Unless you're a trained professional <laughs> on a closed course. And if you saw his Wikipedia, you'd know well, he's a trained professional. Yeah, and I'm on the closed course called Los Angeles Highways. Yeah. Kevin? What? What are you doing? Oh, I was just curious to see if he would actually mount a rim onto a wheel. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, because in fact we do. Oh my God. Because <laughs> if y'all were to remember the other day when we were talking about engine and motors, and Brittany's like, yeah, it's kind of like wheel and rim. I'm gonna and you, you saw right my in your titty right now. Right now okay. <laughs> and you saw my face where I was like, I'll uh, fight no, you. Ow. Your words oh, were literally, uh, I'll fight. That's what you get, karma. Yeah. And look, <laughs> this. My friends, is a rim. Is a rim. Because if this was a wheel, I would not be able to do this. So, a good right? way to tell is that you can hula hoop a rim. <laughs> you cannot hula hoop a wheel. Is that what you're telling me right That's now? That's what I'm telling you that you are completely wrong about wheel versus rim. Thanks, Kev. It's not surprising that everybody gets confused between wheel and rim. And I would say that, to be fair, they're used interchangeably today. I'm not going to get into your, your engine motor debate. Okay. <laughs> it's motor. Kevin is quite correct that that is a rim that he was holding and not a wheel. But I think this, most people call this either a rim or a wheel. And it's, it's a BBS wheel. Correct. It's a genuine a gen period 80s BBS three piece RS that I'm putting on my 911. You normally don't see these things uh, not in a shop. But what a tire I, machine? A tire, tire machine. But what I did was mount these tire machines into vans and balancers, computer balancers, so that we could do this, like wherever wherever people are. Oh my god, you should go to drift events. I know, we've offered actually, because I, I used to drive in Formula Drift, right? In pro drift events, most people have some kind of oh, tire mounting location. Yeah. 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 yeah, but in the in the lower sort of... Like the, Pro-Am and Texas Street Legal kind of... Yeah. By the way, if you're ever mounting tires, kids, lube is your friend. People underuse lube. So I would say use as much lube as you possibly can, especially on those ultra high performance tires and your race tires. On the other hand, as soon as you mount an ultra high performance tire on your high performance car, don't go and do a burnout right away. 
You know why? 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 I, don't know. I see it all the time. So in race cars, we mark tires where the valve stem is on the tire. Yeah. Well, you spin and, and if you spin the tire, it's very easy with a powerful car with a lot of grip to spin the tire on the rim or wheel. Pull out of the tire store, blah, burn out, and the balancing's all gone to hell. Ah. Ah. You, yeah, we don't have to worry about that because we have bead locks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Can you do a 40? Like if somebody has yeah. a 40 inch tire? This truck is specifically set up to do 40s. So we actually, when, when BF Goodrich did their uh, launch for the, K, uh, the KM3 up in Big Bear, we mounted all of the um, 39. 39s. Thank you. 39s. See, look at you guys. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we mounted them all. Actually, I personally mounted them all right here in this driveway. Do you mount bead locks? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, bead locks, as you know, are a whole different technique. And most and shops won't mount them. Is the the whole thing there? A lot of shops. Why? I don't know. They won't. Like a uh, lot of shops. One, they they. I don't think they have experience. Right. Two, they say it's liability because, as far as I know, two companies who sell DOT approved wow. bead locks. It's harder than you think to actually find a shop that'll mount a bead lock. That's interesting. The most important thing, though, with your bead locks is your t tightening pattern. You at least have to do the first few, you know, crisscross, crisscross, and then step over one and step over one, and then after that you can go around. But it, it, anybody who just goes around like this, you're gonna probably end up with a jacked up beadlock technique. Cattywampus. Cattywampus, great word. Cattywampus. Did you guys I learned that? Uh, no, I learned from that Brittany. Word? That's a Brittany word. It's a Brittany. Are there Brittany terms? The Brittanyism. I have my own terms. So you're at the office, or you're at work, you can't get away, or you don't want to take a half a day off or a whole day off, you just call zip tire and. Yeah, exactly. The problem is, I mean, you think about it, anytime you have to go to a tire store, it's like an hour and a half of suffering. Like first, you have to take time of your day and go sit there. Make sure that your balancers, kids, when you're using them, you put the cone on the inside, and we use pin plates on the outside. You'll see a lot of people just jam this taper on the outside, yeah. and that's not designed to be the interference surface for a taper. That's not how your car works. Your car holds the hub like this. Most uh, shops are too. I've seen people put that on the outside all the time. All the time. All the time. And I, we have to retrain techs all the time because that's the easy way to do it. The taper goes on first, then the wheel, and in fact, oh. we use. These super cool, these are a thousand bucks, this set of things, uh, pin plates that, that correctly simulate the lugs on your car to hold the wheel on. And people wonder, what? I just, just got new wheels and tires and everything's unbalanced. Technicians don't use the machines well, they don't calibrate them often enough. Also, we, see, uh, we sometimes see new aftermarket wheels that are, are produced bent, or people get them brand new out of the box and they're not round. I've had a thousand wheels mounted, I've never seen this. Yeah, the pin plates, and we have, we have pin plates, thank you. Yeah, so there's six bolts and four bolts and all the different bolt patterns. Do you have an eight bolt pattern? Yeah, yeah. Um, what? That is the only way, the way that I just did it with a taper on the inside and lug simulators on the outside, that's the only way to really know that it's doing the same thing that your car does. Okay, now, this is where, Brittany, you ready? Yeah. You have to stand really still. Okay, don't move. And actually, it's, it's done so that the, this is at the center line of the vehicle, so any, any rocking has less effect. So if you take like a really good high quality new wheel like a Porsche GC2 wheel and a really high quality tire like a Michelin Pilot Sport. Often they're so well manufactured both the wheel and the tire that you almost need to put no weight on them. Crappy off-brand tires who the shall remain nameless. Like you watch <laughs> them you watch them on the balancer and you can see they're going walka 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 even when they're brand new. Yeah. Not all tires are round. Yeah. No, higher quality not. tires are more round and they're more uniformly molded. And so we find all the time that the higher quality the tire, higher quality the wheel, the less weight they all need. Um, and that's why you really get what you and, pay for. And also with new tires, there's a red dot and a yellow dot that I've recently learned about, which is a high and low spot, right? Yeah, so that's a great point. The simple rule to remember is always mount, if there's a yellow dot, put the yellow dot at the valve stem. And if there's only a red dot, put the red dot at the valve stem. The, the yellow dot is about weight and the red dot is actually, and I, I'm frankly a little foggy on it, but the, the high point of the tire, if you're going to use road force balancing, because they acknowledge that they're not all around. 17 ounces was the most we've ever needed on the tire. Yeah. That was a beadlock wheel, so you have yeah. all these bolts everywhere. Yeah. You have all these. There's so many ways for it. But that's still way. like yeah. strapping a puppy to the inside <laughs> of your wheel. <laughs> no puppies were harmed <laughs> in mounting these wheels and tires. Just balancing beads? I put, yeah, a, I mean, I put a puppy We just in my strap tire. puppies to our tires. Oh Can I get a smaller God. puppy for this wheel? We do not strap puppies to our tires. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, the truth is though too, and, and it's worth, you know, you're in the off-road world, in a new Mercedes-Benz or, or BMW, somebody sensitive might be able to tell if it's a quarter ounce out of balance, a half ounce or more people will probably feel. With a mud train tire on a 40, you have so much vibration and so much SHIT going on all the time, it's actually hard to tell. It's still that worth balancing. That was such a dad thing right there, by yeah. the way. That was, that was really? Super, that was yeah, cute. that you spelled. That was really cute that you spelled it out. That was really well, I am cute. a father. I, I know, I know. You have two little girls, but that is just 
<laughs> I've never had anyone do that on camera before. That's funny. Okay, continue. continue. Okay, okay. You can believe it later. All right, I'll start swearing more. But it, you know, you still should balance things as best you can. But anything that you do with a big mud train, you're you're chasing the horizon. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's actually something we're talking about. Mud trains are not gonna wear like an all-terrain wood. Or a street tire. Or a street tire. They're just simply totally not. Yeah. So no so matter what you do. You're exactly right. So this is a tread block, right? This is your big mud train tread block. And this is a road. So okay. as you're driving along, you got those big chunky kind of square blocks. In order to get that traction you want, which is kind of like paddle traction, yeah. that kind of like clawing so traction. Claw rocks and mud and all that. The way that they're built is like with a an edge on them. Yeah. Right? And so when that comes around to the bottom in the rotation, it hits the road and makes noise, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have one, oh, this even bends. If you have like a, an all-terrain tire, which tend to have like more interlocking tread blocks, yeah. you end up getting like this kind of interference with the road so that it's on a chevron angle and you don't get the same amount of noise. That means you don't get the same amount of heat yeah. and you get more even wear because the tread block when it hits like this wants to squirm out and move around. It's literally as it's making contact with the pavement, it's scrubbing itself. Correct, because what, what happens is, oh, we can use this too for this. So imagine that this is the tire as it goes around, right? Actually, yeah. it flat spots a little bit on the bottom, yeah. right, as it goes around. So what happens is the tread blocks are squishing, you know, working against each other and wearing their edges off. Okay. Right? That's how you get the cupping and the sort of like uneven wear to each block. Again, makes noise, heat, and wears. Yeah, well, and so that's kind of one of the things too, is that, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's much rain, so it's just a softer compound, but it's not really no. the soft compound so much the as design. everything. It's the design, it's having these big, aggressive, chunky blocks that help you crawl. It, it, everything is kind of working against so you. It's what causes your road noise, your uneven wear, so your yeah. quicker wear. So at 20,000 miles, when your mud terrain tire starts humming and you still, and you start feeling the vibration at under 10 miles an hour, it's that's not necessarily It's not like a, oh my God, my tires are crap. It's no, you got mud terrain tires and you've been using them for 20,000 street miles. Plus yeah. tearing them up on the trail. Tearing them up on the trail. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. The tire's yeah. not just a, a big black round piece of rubber. And they, they're all round and black and people think they're all the same, but they're not. There's even different types of rubber. This is a different type of rubber. There's a, a rubber seam right here. This is tread rubber here, which is designed for wear resistance. This is sidewall rubber, which isn't designed to wear. It's designed mostly to be UV resistant and, and sort of impact resistant. This is the, the green rubber, the carcass rubber inside is another different kind of rubber. And there's usually another fourth, at least, different type of rubber in the construction of the tire, all vulcanized together into this, you know, magic device. What we actually put tires through, like we're, we have a 6,000 pound vehicle supported by these four tires, and then you see the stuff that we do, and it takes it. 70 miles an hour on the highway, we're towing, and we're also scraping them, scrubbing them, pitching them against rocks and mud and sand. And, Crazy. and it's like, how can one thing take so much abuse and just keep going? So when it starts making a little bit of noise, I don't care. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> the well, fact that they have it like literally self-imploded is kind of just a, a miracle in and of itself. Uh, and yeah. so I do have a question. Our tires, we've got probably about 25,000 miles on them, and we do have some light... I, I, feathering. We, feathering, I yeah. think is the word for it, where you kind of have high, high spots, low spots, high spots, low spots. Now, granted, and we mentioned this earlier, there were multiple times where Kevin may have driven <laughs> about two hours at six PSI. Uh, eight PSI. Eight, 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 eight PSI. <laughs> I always say, what can you do to prevent ah. that on any type of mud terrain? One of the things, and they kind of put in the manual, is don't drive at 6 PSI for two hours on okay, normal yeah. roads. That's, that's, I think I read that in the manual somewhere. <laughs> You're fighting such a losing battle because as soon as you jack a truck up and you know you put lift kits on it and so on and, and have more deflection in the suspension, more often the tires are working against each other and trying to go different directions. Yeah. And if you go wheeling, of course, that's the whole point. This yeah. tire's pulling that way and this one's pulling you around this way. It's always going to create uneven wear, so you're kind of chasing chasing your tail but as good as you can get the alignment and as often as you can rotate the tires around the better off you'll be in terms of trying to keep that wear even not quite the right word like trying to knock off the high points you have in the right front just for a while just basically prevent it for as long as possible right yeah or companies have come a long way and i know everybody likes the cool aggressive mud trains but these companies all of them have come a long way with all trains they have tried their best to make the all terrain as capable as a mud terrain, but still retaining the street ability and not getting the your, loud noise. Your and, length and your road Right, noise and so and most people, 99% of people, honestly should probably have all terrains. And that's coming for someone that's gonna run a mud terrain no matter what. I won the Baja 1000 in class 10 on all terrains. No flats, one set of tires. 
The, the all-terrain tires are actually incredibly good. I took one through the Rubicon on a mostly stock JK. But now, look, if you're going up the rock faces and stuff, you probably yeah, want crawlers. Yeah, if, or... if you're doing big rock crawling or like mud bogging, obviously, yeah. you, total sand. You're going to get a margin with the mud Different kind terrain, of a thing. Sure. But mud. your general trail driving, yeah. an all-terrain is actually I, I support all terrains all the time. I know mud trains, mud, muds look cool. And, and that's the thing. A lot of people usually just like the really aggressive look. I, I know I do, but we also use it. We do a lot of highway yeah. miles, but we also do a lot of very aggressive off-roading. And you know what? When you get to be old, and like a father, speaking of dad talk, you start to make these sensible decisions, kids. You can put mud trains on those cars if you want, but it'll be real noisy, they'll wear fast, and you'll be out of your allowance sooner. But if you put on all terrains like your dear old dad does, oh boy, I get more miles, and it's a lot quieter. I can talk to your mom in that truck. Oh my god. I, I can talk I thought, to your mom. I thought in you didn't that want trip. to talk to mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, look at that. See, that's Look at that. Zero zeros. Zero 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 zero. Now we can put on the car. He's finished doing that. We'll get We're gonna to... walk back through yeah. oh. this uh, tire wall here. And also and, and that beauty over there. We can get into alignments on solid axle vehicles. You don't have to pay anybody to do your alignment. You can do it with the tape measure. It's actually very easy on a solid axle vehicle. We'll have to do that on another video though. We will. We will. We'll do it all the time. Being your public service announcement today has been presented by Zip Tire. You're a mobile tire service company. Call 844-ZIP-TIRE, www.ziptire.net. Because we do cool things like mount slicks onto Porsches and or also- Or 40-inch tires onto bead locks. We do 40s. Okay, there you go. How old are your tires? So on one side of every tire, it's mandated by the Department of Transport to put uh, a stamp. And the first part of the stamp uh, would be, is the manufacturing um, code of the plant and where it, was, where it was built. This 1815, the last four digits, this tire was built in the 18th week of 2015. So if you're buying used tires from somebody or you just bought a used car, it looks like it has good tires. Take a second and, and all four tires may be different because they yeah, may have people, replaced yeah, one of them or whatever. So just don't just one look tire at, one. at a time kind of a thing. Yeah. Here's a properly old tire. And properly so, old tire. Yeah, no, actually not as old as I thought. This is 2008. It has the four digit code, code yeah. but older than that. And the digits are actually different. Usually it's missing the, the third digit. Yeah. It might just be the single year. I'm trying to remember the year it kind of went over to the different format. But if you have anything but the four digit for format, your tire is already too old. Okay. <laughs> Public service announcement number three. Don't accept a shop that just either puts a plug in from the outside. If you're on the trail, you can plug your own. Oh plug. yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, right. you I have can, 100 emergency, tire plugs. You can do emergency yes. repairs. Right, but if you're going to a shop to get a repair, some of them will try to just glue a patch on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. Mm -mm. I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you just patch this on the inside yeah. to stop the air from coming out, that'd be fine for a while. But what happens is water and salt and gut gets in here on the metal cords, yeah. and then the tire starts to rust from the inside out and will fail again. It needs oh. a special oh. kind of patch. Okay. It's, a, it, it's, it's like, it's like this. What's it look like, Kevin? It looks like this. So it's got a little dingy thingy here, yeah. and it's got a patch on the bottom, and then you shove it through the hole, and then you roll it on with this roller deal, but you gotta put the glue down first. <laughs> he'll, he'll show you the actual thing right here. Oh, I like the way you're illustrating it. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah, just keep going. <laughs> For your way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's way better. These kind of patches. Oh, okay. So instead of having it, how did you describe it? Oh, okay, like like this. Yeah. yeah. So it, it has, it's a patch, but yeah. it also has this thing that goes through, and then we cut it off, right? It's called a stitcher. Yeah, that's your hand. That was the roller. I worked at Big O Tires when I was like 16. Oh. Also, Aww. do not accept people who don't scrape away the mold release on the inside of the tire first, because if you try to glue a patch on without scraping away the mold release, then it's not going to stick either. There's all these industry techniques that people get lazy and don't do. Yeah, you got, sure. Go to places that do it right. It doesn't have to be zip tire. That's zip tire.net, 844 zip tire. But <laughs> just at least wherever you're going, make sure yeah. they're doing it right. Okay, so this is the exciting part. This is the car getting the, the slicks. <laughs> Public service announcement number four, do not run slicks on the street, kids. Unless you're a professional. Interestingly, uh, actually, slicks aren't bad in the wet, and I've raced in the rain on slicks, but um, if it's you hit a puddle, standing water. like a puddle, yeah, like the size of the palm of your hand, you can be S-O-L. So actually, I'd like, your, I'd like your watchers to vote. Is this gonna look cooler on the BBS three pieces, or is it gonna look cooler on the original Fuchs German wheels? Next thing, don't accept a place that uses an impact gun to put your nuts on without hand threading them, unless they're very good with an impact gun. And I'm not saying I am, but there it is. So, terrible. for you kids that know about cars, this is called the Widowmaker, yeah. which is a really cool Porsche. Por Porsche. <laughs> it's a Porsche. Okay, but I don't know why it's called a Widowmaker. Thank so we're gonna have the owner tell you. I own it. I'm the owner. I bought it before they were expensive. I'm not that. Guy. How much did you buy this car for? I, should, I, should I? Okay. Yeah. I paid eighteen thousand dollars for it. <laughs> it's, good to, it's, it's appreciated. It's kind of turning into the kids' college fund, but I still drive it like a, an idiot. Uh, Ferdinand Porsche 
I used to say Porsche, but then people corrected me and called into the TV stations and they were like, it is Porsche. Why can you not say it correctly? It's Porsche. Why is he saying Porsche? It's like, it hurts my ears. So I was, I was beaten down. So now I call yeah. it a Porsche. Porsche. When he first converted a Volkswagen into a sportier car, he left everything Volkswagen-y, otherwise tuned it up a bit. Yeah. I call this a really fast Volkswagen. Yeah, it's just a fast Volkswagen. <laughs> because it is. It's got oh my six... God, I'm gonna get, we're going to get flamed so hard no. for that comment right there. Totally post that. Fast Volkswagen and, yeah, and yeah. put a picture of this and, <laughs> and uh, bring the haters on. From a technical perspective, it's, it's still a very simple vehicle. However, what happened, of course, is they started to get more and more and more power in this basically inherently terrible design of the engine way out in the back. Right? You have a pendulum in the back of your... Yeah, it's like it's like trying to fly an arrow backwards. That's why they spin out. So it, it, it exhibits a lot of things, including trailing throttle oversteer. And the problem with that is if you're in the power and you're starting to slide out and you're starting to worry, people panic and lift the throttle, which oh, takes the weight off, off the, rear, the rear and then you immediately spin, spin around. Spin around, yeah. It's the Corvair problem. It's also the you're Porsche. You're shifting your weight. Right. At the time, fastest car in the world. This did zero to 60 in, in five seconds in 1977, or this is in 82. Yeah. Um, it's a seriously fast car for the day, right? And so people would hit the throttle going around a corner and they'd squat the car down, oh, I'm such a great driver. And then it would start to go really fast and they panic and, and lift off, off the throttle and then they'd go off the on-ramp backwards. Porsche didn't sell it in America between 79 and 86. People argue because they didn't think Americans were good enough to drive them. And they might have been right, but they were going off the road everywhere. Then. So it's called a yeah. Widowmaker because people literally would kill themselves. Yep, yep, exactly. Fantastic. Pretty much. But I love this guy because he has cool that he actually drives. It doesn't just sit in the garage. Just even like that Jag. It's a V12 Jag. He drives it. It doesn't just sit in the garage. Yeah, he, did. he drove like... it to the gym the other day. Yeah. So let's see how this looks. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like the BBSs. Yeah. So I hope you've all learned something about tires here today, kids. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it must have been something because we talked a lot about tires. <laughs> I imagine somewhat everyone watching this video learned one thing. I, that'd be great. I would think so. And if you didn't learn something, I'll learn you something else. Kevin, here. You gotta get up though, you gotta yeah. walk with me. <laughs> if you didn't learn anything about tires in particular, I'll at least teach you something about Andrew. Andrew Comrie Picard. For those of you who are too lazy to actually go Google him, Wikipedia, whatever you want, because we actually did have one commenter call you a moron. Oh. On the last one. I can be a, <laughs> a moron. Basically. He took you he took oh. your jokes seriously. So I'm I don't anyway. tell jokes. What are you talking yeah, about? What are you yeah, what are you talking about? What's happening? Tell me what these are right here. So I'm actually I'm proud of those. Um so rallying my, my chosen motorsport or my first motorsport, yeah. uh, got invited to go to the X Games through yeah. Travis Pastrana and Ken Block making that all happen. So for the first five X Games, I competed the X Games. There were only four of us that did it, Ken Block, Tanner, Faust, Travis, and me. I and say there's only four people who competed in all five, five of, the first, of the first yeah, X Games. Yeah. This is one of them. And they give you a skate deck if you're an, an X Games competitor. And so I kept all my skate decks from the five years that I competed. On top of that, you'll notice hanging out over here <laughs> are also a couple of Baja 1000 medals. Those are, those are finishing medals, but I think the first place plaques are over there on the wall somewhere. This far as you want, that's the X Games medal. Oh yeah, that's there's, the bronze, your, there's the bronze X Games medal right there. Short, I mean, like, there's short literally- Short course off-road. Yeah. So he, he kind of knows how to, he kind of knows how to drive? He's an okay driver. He kind of knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he's also a really great guy, like for real, he really he is. Has. But yeah, guys, we love you. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Again, Andrew, thank you so much just for being awesome in general. If you guys want to learn more about him, you can always check him out, of course, on Google, his website. You can also go to ziptire.net to learn more about his company as well. If you want any of your Light Bright Nation merch, you can go to lightbrightstudios.com. Any of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. We love you, and we will see you next time. Bye! You got to blow a kiss to the camera. Um, let's look at some busted tires. Yeah. What's so wrong much, with that tire? We have so much tread. And then we. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually, it's about the biggest bolt I've ever seen. Is it coming? It's so long. <laughs> Dang it. That is a proper puncture. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> and that's a 10 ply. That's a commercial tire. This is called that's a C metric. It's a beefy tire. Bad.